Hi, and welcome to Be a Date Wizard with Date Formulas. Hi, I'm Eric, and um, the topic for today's videos are date calculations and date formulas. And uh, this is an ancient topic in the world of Business Central, in the world of dynamics, in the world of innovation. Um, and so I'm doing a video on it. Well. Let me, so the other day I had a, uh, we had a meeting with our, in, in eFocus, the company I work for, had a meeting with our marketing department and they showed us the, um, what search terms had generated traffic to our homepage. And quite up there in, in, in the, uh, in the statistics were several search terms that involved calc date. I thought, like, but hang on, we have not done anything in eFocus would calc date uh, that should generate any search traffic. So I went in and looked and we actually have a product called WSFN, which is a way to create portals, custom portal vendor portals, customized portals uh, to BC. And there's um, one of the, uh, the functionalities in, in WSFN is a way to extend HTML so you can uh, include data from data and functionality from Business Central. And the calc date function is also exposed in that one. And apparently that was enough to generate traffic. So I think I think the internet needs more information on calc date, on, on date formulas. Uh, so this is it. So if you're already a wizard in, in date formulas, this is not the video for you. Um, otherwise, let, let's take a look at this. Um, and uh, just to spice it up a bit, here is the BC script scratch pad. Um, if you don't know what BC script is, you should have become a subscriber and seen the video on, on the fact that I'm working on building an AL compiler in AL. So I thought, oh, my, since this is just kind of a, a workbench uh, scenario where I want to try out some different things with calculating on dates, I might as well do it in, in BC scripts. Um, so let's talk first about, you know, if, if let's say that I do today, everybody knows the function today, I evaluate that and I get today's date. It's Sunday, January 10th. So here in British Columbia and it's raining. So I'm recording videos instead of being out skiing. Um, so th that's pretty easy. So, and, and the date type in Business Central is actually an integer behind the scenes. So if I do calculate, or sorry, I don't calculate yet. That's was a, I misspoke. If I do today plus one, I get tomorrow. If I do today, you know, plus seven, I get next Sunday. Um, and, and uh, you know, you, you get the drift here. Today minus seven get, uh, will get me last Sunday and minus 365 will get me not because 2020 was a leap year. Uh, so in this case, we'll actually get the 11th last year. Um, so so dates are just an integer. Um, and, and dates are a very important part of an accounting system. So let's say that I go to, um, let, let's actually do something else to begin with. So let's create a small program here. Uh, let's do record uh, cost, uh, cost model ledger entry, create a variable of that. And then we create a function where we do, what, what do we do? We do set filter on posting date uh, and we just set you know we set a string and then let's do message 
c.get filter from posting date. That, that's that's a program right there. Um, so if we try the same thing here, and we say today, let's run this program. Slightly different formatting in the uh, result window, but you can see that we are getting today. Um, but in this case, this is so that there, there's a slight difference here because we can do the same thing here and say today plus 7d that will get us today plus 70 so, so now we are we're in the setting a filter with a formula um so we can also do um what should we do we could do we could do current quarter cq how about that that's a, that's an odd one uh, so now we get the ending date of the current quarter. Um, so we could say that current quarter minus 5D because we want to we want to do something that is supposed to be posted at the end of the quarter, but not quite at the end, just before. So then we get a few days before, always the current quarter. So that takes from, from whatever where we are today. Um, we can also do get ranges out of this thing. So, so there, the keywords like week. So now we get a date range, and and the concept by default here is that a date starts on a Monday and ends on a Sunday. Uh, so be aware of that uh, if you're a, in somewhere in the world where you're actually the other way around. There might be a setting for that. If you know that how to change the starting date, then let me know in the comments below. Um, I could do the same thing here and say quarter and we get the the, the range of the current quarter um, we can also do something and and this is i have seen a couple of discussion uh i forgot where uh about the you know what's the purpose of the um the accounting periods, but accounting periods are also in here. So I've, if I do P1, I get January. So if I do P5, I get Mar uh, May, sorry, <laughs> May. But what I was going to say that if you set up your uh, accounting periods to be uh, bi-monthly bi or by quarter, then the piece will adjust to that. So depending on your actual uh, reporting periods, let's say that, that in this case, the demo data is calendar year, but you might have year end on December 1st or something like that. So the piece will then adjust to whatever is in accounting periods. Um, of course, we also have the 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 friend of of today is work date and and we can see here that because I'm in Kronos uh Kronos will set the work date to match is it the latest date of the demo data or something like that uh so it thinks that it's the 6th of April 2020 that's a lot of quarantine to go back to, so so I'm not going to go there. So get let's get rid of work date. But but the idea of a, of a work date is for, is of course to be able to adjust the base of your calculation. So I could do work date plus plus fourteen days, and that will give me later in April. Still still sitting here in my basement. Um, So, so in, in this case, we're setting a filter and, and, and the, the base of this is that we have some functions that are date formulas and some functions that are filter date helper thingy. Um, so, so let's change our little program here. Um, actually, let's, let's just go back to, we can just do calc date. So BC script can work in two ways. It can either run a program as you saw, or we can just evaluate a, an expression. Um, so if I do calculate uh, seven days from today, so this is the, the calculate function. 
I, I get next Sunday. Um, and then we, we can we can you know we can say we had the one where we said okay based on today let's get the current quarter plus one month minus ten days meaning that that you, you can actually and let's try to evaluate this and see if we get something we get funky we get the same data we as we got somewhere else but just in 2021 um so the idea is that you can actually incorporate the accounting uh, terminology into your code so when when somebody say okay uh, this should be an and the, the last something of something that's a date formula uh, and it's it might look complicated but i don't think it's that complicated uh, it really helps if you read it out loud so in this case current quarter plus one month minus 10 days that's that's pretty that's pretty easy to uh to understand i think uh so yeah read it out loud um there's also um actually let's go back to i'm just gonna undo my way back to my little program here uh there's also stuff that i think you can do like monday let's run this and uh, we get monday based off of the work date in this case um let's try it with tuesdays and see what we get there so there's a bunch of yeah get the the the, the day after um i'm just gonna check my notes if the other ones that uh, i want we can also do some stuff like you know tomorrow and and you know yesterday so it, it, a, a funky filter will be yesterday till tomorrow it's kind of a a, a a fun little filter to to have you know the day before the day after that can be accomplished in a lot of different ways but uh from a readability this is yesterday till tomorrow i, I think that that's pretty uh, pretty readable it has a high readability that was a hard word to incorporate in a sentence anyway the idea here is that don't go out trying to you know build dates and and figure out if if you know deconstruct a date and then plus one to the month and build a new date and minus one to most of these cases can be done with date formulas uh, and it's way more um, intuitive afterwards so actually we'll see what goes on one last thing i want to mention here because date formulas are actually language dependent because today is today in 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 english speaking countries but that might not be in in all countries uh, and current month might be uh, month and current might not be that so if you want to make sure that your code is workable across languages you need to put it in uh, in, in brackets and then i'm getting a uh, an error here uh, but nonetheless let's do something else and see if this yesterday and tomorrow might be a, an exception so if i do 10 days here so i get 10 days and and uh, and and without them i get the same but if if d is not the, the the letter for days in your language then 10d will break but 10d in brackets will not break uh, so that's pretty cool anyway that's date formulas date calc date uh, it really adds a lot of uh, it removes a lot of complexity in, in dealing with dates and and the functions that are in there are really um designed to cater to the 
the normal accounting functions. So when when your account says it has to be on, on the last day of the uh, uh, of the the month or it has to be on the last Thursday of the month, you might need to compound them. So you find the last week and then you find the Thursday of the last week. But but you can do all that with date formulas. Um, and if you have some funky date formulas, let me know in the comments below the show. I would love to see them. Uh, otherwise, have fun with this until the next time and I'll see you out there.